Hey everybody! We just finished planting out our garlic and we got a little bit of the munchies. So yeah. while we're doing our dinner behind us, which is um, some stock and then we're going to make some turkey fried rice a little bit later on for dinner, uh, we decided to make some pretzels. It's a recipe we've done before. We found it at Sally's Baking Addiction. It was pretty straightforward, really low on the ingredient list, went really quickly and turned Delicious. out awesome. So. <laughs> We figured it's been a while since we've made pretzels, so we thought we'd make some more tonight. And we wanted to bring you guys along because it is a simple thing that you can actually make at home. Um, a lot of the times people will buy frozen ones or they'll wait for special occasions like the fair, or going into your local mall and getting one made. Um, but it is something you can batch make so you can enjoy it right at home. So we're not gonna tell you the exact recipe because you'll have to go visit Sally's blog, but we will link it below. But we do have the ingredients out here and we will kind of go over what you need for uh, the recipe. So first is some flour, just standard all-purpose. Granulated sugar, again, just okay. simple pantry staple sugar. Basic sea salt or just a nice kosher salt. Uh, you want something a little bit finer, granulated. Anything you would use for baking would work just fine. Uh, dry yeast. And then we're gonna need one egg. And I believe we only need the whites of this because it's just for an egg wash. Yeah, I believe so. And then we're gonna actually use the rest of it so we're not wasteful for our turkey fried rice tonight. Yep. Um, and then there is an optional step in this recipe where you dip the rolled pretzels in a baking soda and water solution. So we're gonna go through that step. You don't need to do it if you don't want to. And then the final, it, makes it, really good, it does add a little bit to the flavor. And then the final thing is just some coarse sea salt to top the pretzels when they come out of the oven. And then we do um, two different ways. We like it with some melted butter as well. So we have some salted butter here. And then for dipping, we did a cheese sauce prior, but we also like do that. Yeah, mustard on pretzels is kind of a go-to. These are a nice soft gooey pretzel, so it uh, works really well with the mustard. Fantastic. So we're going to, oh, one more. Yeah, we forgot about that ingredient. Oh yeah, and then water. <laughs> and then there. behind us too, we've got a pot just starting to boil and the baking soda is gonna get added to that in a little bit. And then of course you need a tray with some parchment paper so it's an easy cleanup and nothing sticks. And we're gonna show you how you can make the pretzels right now. All right, so I've got my lukewarm water in just a standard mixing bowl here and I'm gonna add my yeast. We're just gonna let that do its thing. Also gonna add to that, checking the recipe here. Gonna add salt and sugar to this as well. as we're working makes things a lot easier. And then what we're gonna do is we've got the salt, the sugar, and the yeast. We're gonna give that a light stir. Just use a small whisk here. Time, 
and we're just going to keep adding flour incrementally until we get kind of the right texture, which is a non-sticky ball of dough. But it is still a fairly moist dough. And this isn't the kneading process that comes after this part. You can see right now it's fairly sticky. I am not the neatest baker in the world yet. I haven't got those baker's hands. I think we're pretty close. Say we're probably just about there. Now if I find when I'm kneading it still super sticky, I will add a little bit more flour. Now because there's a fair bit of flour still kind of in the bottom of the bowl, I'm gonna actually just pour that right onto the counter here and get started on the kneading. And we're gonna knead for a couple of minutes here. And all we're gonna try to do is build up a little bit of Gluten in the dough. I can already tell I need to definitely add a little bit more flour to this. But now that my hands are a little messy, my beautiful wife behind the camera is going to dough. shake just a little bit right on the top of the, the dough ball. And the magic of video editing. We're back. We're back. <laughs> That's already a lot better. Still kind of sticky. It's definitely getting there. Definitely gonna need some more. So the wife is going to pour a good amount of flour. I might have. I might have overshot my earliness of turning it on to the countertop. So the wife's gonna assist me and she's gonna dump a bunch of flour onto the, the countertop here because I am a little bit doughed. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to work that extra flour in now and continue with the kneading process. I would recommend following the directions on the blog a little bit more directly, but there we go. That's actually starting to feel a lot better. It's not sticking to my hands now as I'm working it. Okay, so now the lovely laborious part of kneading the dough. And I'll keep working some of this flour in as I'm going to keep the same consistency. All right, so the next step, take our lily ball of dough here, and we're gonna evenly divide it. This recipe lets you determine whatever size of pretzel you wanna make. Um, 
we're gonna kinda, I don't know, we're gonna start by dividing it in half. There's half, and we're gonna quarter it. Those will definitely be some chunky pretzels if we rolled each of those in. So you know what, we're gonna go for, we're aiming for eight pretzels, I think, on this. So we're gonna take each of those, put them aside. Now, well floured surface, obviously. Start with my hands. The idea now is you want to create long, uniform, a little bit too much flour. So that's about 16 inches in length. I'm gonna try to pull out just a little bit more. Okay, now the artistic part. Take your two ends, give your pretzel a twist. There's kind of a pretzel form. Set him off to the side and repeat the process. together, kind of the same way you'd make a scrambled egg, um, into a largest bowl, and I got my whisk from earlier. Okay, I'm doing this right now. Using a whole egg, because it's not just the egg white. I messed up. So the recipe does say to dip the boiled pretzels into this. I'm probably, for sake of ease, going to use a silicone brush to brush the tops of the pretzels because what I'm going to do is dip them into the boiling water and baking soda mixture, place them on the rack that we're going to bake them on, and then brush the tops and uh, douse them with salt. Alright, so what I've got here is a slotted spatula ladle thing. Um, I actually kind of custom made this one myself. I've had it for forever, but it used to be much flatter. Found that if you bent the handle up, it actually works great for a lot of things, including deep frying, making french fries, chicken wings, all that kind of stuff. But it also works great for making pretzels. Starting to load one of these guys up onto here, gently. And we're gonna go over to our boiling water and baking soda solution. And we're gonna count out about 30 seconds. Get some of that extra water drain off. to our baking sheet.
So next step is, using our beaten egg, we're going to brush the tops of all of the pretzels. And we've had the oven going and set to 425 the entire time we've been working on these, so it's nice and hot now. This is a fairly quick recipe if you're looking for a easy to make afternoon snack. Um, I'm not sure how these do for freezers, um, but I can't imagine that they would do terribly. It's just kind of dough. Maybe we'll test a couple. Do you think any of these are gonna survive past today? Probably not. I think so. <laughs> the whole idea for the egg wash is just to help give everything a little bit more of a golden color. These are gonna go in the oven for about 10 minutes and just on 425. And then after that, they're gonna get another five minutes with the oven switched over to broil. Depending on your oven, you gotta determine if you want it at a high broil or a lower broil. Um, also, whatever rack you've got the oven, uh, the, you've got the pretzel set on, we'll have a determination on that as well. So once it goes to broil, just kind of watch it by eye and don't rely on the time you're looking for that brown, lovely brown pretzel color. Egg wash is on, so now we're gonna use our coarse salt. And we like salty pretzels, so we're going to get a nice, nice sprinkle going here. This is just a pretty basic coarse sea salt we get through our local bulk foods supply store. If you're looking for things like salt and even baking sodas and all your baking goods, look for your bulk supply stores because they will get you a much better deal than the grocery stores for a lot of these things. And if you're doing a big weekend bake of breads and muffins and all that stuff, paying half the cost in flour will really add up over the multiple loaves and multiple muffin pans. So there we go. So those guys are ready to go. Load it up nicely. Right into, we've got the middle rack here. We'll go right in and we will see you in 10 minutes. So now what we're gonna do is switch over to broil. I'm gonna do low just so we can keep an eye on it and not burn them because nobody wants to burn pretzel. It's a sad day. But if you wanna look inside, they're nice and cooked. They're kind of a lovely yellow going brown color, but we definitely want that beautiful pretzel brown on them. So now we're just gonna put the broil on and this should go pretty quick with less than, should be less than five minutes, so. All right, our pretzels turned out beautiful. Take them off of the parchment paper. They're probably stuck to just a little bit. Put them on a cooling rack here. And as much as we want to dive into these right away, I'm gonna give them minute or two just to cool off so they don't melt their faces off. But I can already tell these are nice and soft. They got a good crunch on the outside. The bottom still feel lovely. Okay guys, this is where we're gonna end the video. 